The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Ho, 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 and welcome back to the Holiday Workshop. In our previous episode, we started building the Xbox One tablet. We made the screen portion and the moving flap. Today, we're going to keep adding layers, putting in the Xbox One itself and the associated circuitry. Let's get started. Amazing builds, exclusive mods, cutting edge ideas, electronics, engineering, and more. Every week on Element 14's The Ben Heck Show. In the previous episode, we made the screen portion and the velvet flap for the Xbox One Portable. In this episode, we're going to continue from there, building up away from the screen with multiple layers. We need to mount the motherboard, Blu-ray drive, hard drive, the motherboard for the LCD, the Xbox One's power supply, the LCD's power supply, and the power input jack. We also have to make sure some of these ports are accessible for like USB sticks and whatnot, and if possible, attach a handle to the unit. So I've laid the parts out here on the LCD in the general position they're going to go. I'm drawing this on the computer as well, but I like to see things in actuality beforehand. I think we have enough room here. And I have this HDMI cable, which I carefully whittled away at, and I've bent it at 90 degrees. One thing about HDMI cables, they tend to be kind of thick and bulky, so if it was, was intact, it wouldn't fit inside the case, so I had to break it down. I will seal it with hot glue to protect the wires once I know that it works. I think this is a good starting point. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is reattach the LCD driver board, and if that works, we can go from there. This is the best place to put the PCB for the screen, but it's no longer in range of the control buttons or the LED backlighting. So I'm gonna to have to extend these wires over to the board. I'm going to use this ribbon cable, which is, I don't know, 26 gauge, I think. Uh, it's actually a little thicker than what this is, so it should be fine. It should have a perfectly decent current carrying capacity. All right, time to get started. This is the power brick for the screen. It will be inside the unit, but I'm just testing it for now. So we're gonna make sure that everything still works, that we can see signals, and that these capacitive buttons still work in their new configuration. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, you got something? I wish the display's working. Let's try to go into the menu. I don't really care for these capacitive touch buttons the Samsung monitors have. My computer monitors back there have them as well. Um, but they appear to work. So you can just touch the surface here and the monitor will turn on. It'll probably turn on automatically once there's a signal coming into it, but there isn't yet. So, all right, the monitor part of this appears to work. All right, I put a brace on this ahead of time to keep it straight and level when I was sawing it. So now we have this 15 degree bend on this piece as well. Every piece needs the 15 degree bend. Looks like that lines up pretty good. I put multiple screw holes in this, more than I really need because it's being put together in layers. So we're gonna attach this piece to the front of the frame and then you know we'll put certain screws through that I've marked and then we'll use the unmarked screw holes for the next layer. That way we can put it all together and it still can be taken apart. Because you know I love to say, build things you can take apart. Wait, does your mom even know what Game of Thrones is? Mine, I'm sure doesn't. I added a spacer here to brace the center of it. 
Yeah. The reason I want to do that is because I want to make sure the motherboard stays straight. If it bends too much, it could cause some of the surface mount components to fail. This is designed a lot better than the nice and toasty old Xbox 360 was, but you still want to take care of it. Okay, that looks like it's... I'm not gonna completely bolt this in place. I just wanna make sure that it fits for now. Okay, so this is probably gonna have to be removed before we can go any further. I removed this USB port, the uh, front panel header, and I also turned a few of the capacitors sideways to give us a low angle here. I'd use the blowtorch because, as I've mentioned many times, there's internal ground planes on modern boards and it's really hard to desolder pins from there because the heat sinks everywhere. So I actually hit it with a blowtorch. I used to do that a lot when I would modify Xboxes. So hopefully it's all right. So this sits here in this cavity. Yeah, see that? One thing I wanna check is I wanna make sure that the uh, X clamp. Yep, they're still using the X clamp. I want to make sure this X clamp doesn't actually touch this metal. Uh, it shouldn't make a difference, but I still don't want it to happen. Okay. As I mentioned, I'm doing this one layer at a time. I, uh, I find that if you uh, try to do everything at once on the computer, you might miss something and then have to go back and fix it. So if I do it one layer at a time, I can anticipate things that might go wrong. So hard drive, eh probably end up going either here or here. The Blu-ray is almost definitely going to go right here. I also need to think about where I'm going to put my fans to exhaust the heat from the heat sink. HDMI plug. See how there's a concavity for it and then this will go over here and then I will hand solder this end of the plug to the LCD's motherboard. Again, I want something I can take apart. Once I know this is working, which it probably is, but once I know it's working, I will cover this with hot glue to protect it. There we go. Now that I have some parts together, I can cut this cable a little short, just like that. All right. And I left some slack on it, just in case I do it wrong, and I can I can try it again without having to redo this. See? Okay. I'm gonna bolt this together and make sure that it all fits. Now it's time for a tech timeout. I found a great new app on the Google Play Store called Zuper Widget Pro. Now widgets are those things in Android that you can put on your screen to show you the weather or show you what music's playing. What this app does is it allows you to make your own widget, which is really awesome. It costs $2.50, so it's not free, but I think it's worth it. For instance, I wanted a good status widget, so I wanted to see my battery level, the time, the RAM level. And what's so cool about this is I can go in and say, all right, I want a progress bar. I want it at such and such a position and I want the progress bar to actually curve 360 degrees. You have 360 degrees of curve here. And it's going to show my RAM, for instance. And you can go in and you can type in all the stuff like, okay, show the uh, total amount of RAM and the total current used RAM. But there's all sorts of stuff you can add. You can add um, the phases of the moon, the network, tasks, uh, what you're listening to in the radio. And uh, once you have it the radio, I mean Pandora. <laughs> Once you have it set up, then you can put it wherever you want. And so this is a two by two widget. You can make a two by one. I made this one here for the, um, for the calendar and the weather. You can even make a widget that takes up your whole screen. And it's very fun. You can easily spend hours making your custom widget and the colors are custom. You can put bitmaps in the background. I'd highly suggest it. So Zuper Widget Pro on the Google Play Store. If you like designing cool things, check it out.
Neither of the new next-gen consoles have standard audio outputs that I could connect directly to an amplifier. So what we're having to do is use an HDMI audio extractor to get the audio signal from the HDMI since that's all we have to work with. Which means we're having to wire HDMI from the console to the converter and then from the converter to the LCD it passes through. I would also say that would add latency, but that's not really the point of this project. So I'm hacking up several HDMI plugs in order to make custom short cables. So I thought I would use this time to just talk about how I'm doing it. I started by finding the crappiest HDMI plugs I could find in my bin. I uh, had a Wii plug from, uh, I'm sorry, I had a Wii U plug. That one was actually pretty well built. And the reason why I'm looking for crappy ones is because they're easier to hack. So I cut off the plug and I slid it open. And here's what's inside. This is a type of plastic. It's almost like a very thick wax. And this is sealing the wires in place. A higher quality HDMI cable would have a metal shield all the way around this instead of just uh, <laughs> masking tape and this um, foil. So basically, if you need to hack an HDMI plug, use a cheaper HDMI cable. So to remove this, I'm going to cut the wax lengthwise, and I'm not trying to preserve the wires, I'm just trying to get the plug. All right, cut the wax lengthwise. And now I'm gonna peel it up on the ends. See, there's the pins. Do the same thing for this side. Just hope I don't stab myself with the tweezers. And I shouldn't be afraid to cut strength because as I mentioned I'm not preserving the wires although I've kept other lengths of HDMI cable in order to get the wires all right there we go okay so to remove this I'm going to reflow the solder always a good idea and bend it until this side releases and then repeat for the other side uh, HDMI is very similar, in fact, it's almost identical to DVI, except for it has audio with it. And what they do is they have four differential pairs. And we have to make sure we wire those correctly in order for the high speed signal to get through. Let me get this finished and then I'll show you that. Here's the HDMI arrangement. It comes out of the Xbox One into the audio extractor and then the analog audio comes out here. We'll power the audio extractor using a spare USB plug on the Xbox One. And then the video comes out of the extractor, then it needs to go into the LCD here. Uh, I removed the HDMI plug originally from the LCD, but I shouldn't have, so I had to reattach it. And then here's the plug that I stripped goes in place there. And here are the wires that we need to attach. HDMI has four differential pairs. Differential pair is where one has a higher voltage than the other and allows high speed data transmission. It's also how USB works. You can see there's a pair here. See how that's got brown and white, red and white. And then on the back, there's going to be two more pairs. Hold it still green and white and blue and white. So those are actually the lines giving you the video signal. The other assorted wires are for device identification, hot plug detect, voltage, ground, and a few other things. So when we rewire these, we wanna make sure that we keep the individual shielding. Can you see that little blue shielding right there? The differential pairs are individually shielded and they also have their own grounds as well. So we need to make sure we connect all the grounds and don't leave anything unconnected so we get a good steady data signal. I'm going to cut this not as short as it has to be, but I'm going to think about how it's going to attach and the maximum length. And then we want it to be fairly compact. So it'll be about like that. So I'm going to cut this and attach it to the LCD. 
I finished my two custom HDMI cables. So here's what happens. The HDMI comes out of the Xbox One, there. Then it goes into the audio extractor. Then it comes out of the audio extractor. Then finally it goes into the LCD. If we tried to use standard HDMI cables, they wouldn't have fit here. They would have all been too long. I mean like one foot is like the shortest you can get. So it took a while, but by hacking up these HDMI cables to short custom lengths, I made something that fits pretty good inside of the unit. Although the fact that we had to use this audio extractor means I had to do everything twice. <sighs> Finally, let's install the power supplies for the LCD and the Xbox One. Here's the Xbox One's power supply. I 3D printed a frame for it so we can bolt it to the frame and then the frame can be attached in here to the LCD. So we'll use double stick adhesive to attach the frame and then attach the power supply to the frame. Basically we're building up structure as we go. And then both the Xbox power supply and the screen power supply will attach to the AC power input. I'm also putting a frame here and it's going to hold the LCD's power supply and I have it on a riser so that the power supply is as far away as possible from the data signal going to the LCD to avoid interference. I have to be careful with these screws. I want them long enough to hold the motherboard to the frame, but if they're too long, they'll go through and push onto the LCD, which I don't want. So in this case, I added a nut to reduce the length of the screw slightly. And then once I know everything works, I'll probably put in some Loctite to further hold them in place. Loctite, the lazy man's lock nut. I'm going to tie the AC lines together. Uh, tying the lines together is just the same as plugging them into the same power strip. Um, I'm using brown for live and white for neutral, since I didn't have any thick black wire. And this plug is labeled neutral, live, and ground, so it's pretty obvious where to hook everything. The Xbox One doesn't have a ground prong on it, but I'm going to add it anyway because you should. And if you think about it, even if it doesn't have a ground prong, if your TV or other peripheral does, it would get connected to ground because the HDMI or whatever would connect to the TV and that would go to ground. So we should be all right, unless I'm making a major miscalculation, in which case I'm wrong. Here is the power for the Xbox. I am going to attach it starting this way and going up. Okay, I'm setting it up in the position that it will be in. And I'm also gonna see if the Blu-ray drive will function correctly at an angle. They don't use the Blu-ray drive much. It's mostly just for installing games because when, the, when you run the game, it's just off of the uh, hard drive. But still, it has to work. Okay, so that's the Blu-ray drive at an angle. Got the Wi-Fi. I still need to replace the fan, but that'll happen in the next part. Got the hard drive. And that should be everything. Okay, we're gonna test it one step at a time. Felix is on my quick disconnect. Okay, Felix, um, go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so the screen is working. So next, I'm gonna try the Xbox. The HDMI converter is getting power. All right. Okay, it's, th I think it just started the Xbox. Okay, the main fan just turned on. Hey, the HDMI works. Uh, okay, it looks like everything is working. The HDMI passed through, so all four of those HDMIs were wired correctly. The Xbox One isn't meant to stand on its side like the PS3 and the Xbox 360 did, so I just want to make sure the Blu-rays load sideways. I'm not getting a disk message here, so I'm not sure if it's actually loading it properly. That could be a problem. So the thing we have to figure out is how to get the disks to read with the Blu-ray drive at an angle, because this Blu-ray drive apparently was not meant to work at any angle except for being flat. That's all the time we have for today. We have the Xbox One running, we know that it works. In our next episode, we're going to hopefully finish this build. We'll see you then. It's time for an important update about the Ben Heck Show. 
Allison has been with us for four years now. She's been put through a lot of ridiculous skits and other questionable situations, but now she is moving on to the next chapter of her life. That's right, but don't worry, The Ben Heck Show will go on. So thank you to everyone for watching. I've enjoyed reading your comments and your emails throughout the years, and it's been a lot of fun. Did you have fun dumpster diving? Yeah, yeah, battling with the Hulk fists, all of that. So we'll find somebody new to fill my shoes, but you know what? They may not have the same acting skills, you know? Just... You're right, their acting skills may be better. <laughs> I'll murder you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for your continued support of the Ben Heck Show, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> I simply released the monster within. Hey, maybe Allie McBeal's real name is Allison. I wonder who they killed on Walking Dead. As long as they don't kill Daryl. Actually, I could, I could live without Glenn. I'm not really into Glenn anymore. Yeah, I know, terrible, right? Felix, how can we work under these conditions? Oh, well, I'm sure you've heard at least one of their songs. Don't you have me no lines to keep your hands to yourself. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. <laughs>